Thanks for staying with us. I'm Bill O'Reilly. In the Factor follow-up segment tonight, it is a fact that marriage has changed more in the last 30 years in the USA than it had in the last 3,000 years all over the world. All kinds of new arrangements are being accepted in our society, and some traditional people feel this is not a good thing. With us now, Stephanie Kuntz, the author of the brand-new book, Marriage, A History, From Obedience to Intimacy or How Love Conquered Marriage. Quite a subtitle. <laughs> All right, what's the headline of the book? Why should I spend 25 bucks reading this stuff? Well, for one thing, uh, it's fascinating to know what marriage really was not like in the, in the past. It was really not about love. It was about power and economic intrigue. And when it did become about love, which was only about 200 years ago, we have this amazing paradox. On the one hand, your marriage can be better than any of the couples I read about in those 5,000 years would yeah. ever have dreamed of. But on the other hand, people are less likely to get married if they don't really find love, and they're less likely to stay married if they're not satisfied. Yeah, but love is uh, defined differently by many, many people. Um, in the That's early true. part of this country, uh, there wasn't dating. I mean, if you were out in Idaho shooting at Native Americans and they were shooting at you and it was one woman for every 50 guys, I mean, a woman would say you. Um, it was a totally different thing. Now it's a sophisticated process, but my parents, I think they loved each other, but it wasn't like it is now. Their expectations weren't so enormous. That's the big change in traditional marriage, the expectations, is it not? It is, and I think that, that um, on the one hand, some people have way too high expectations of marriage. Most you know, like Earth that. is going to move yeah. every day. It's all joyous. What about us poor guys? <laughs> I mean, we have to, the poor guy's got to make a lot of money, all right? Mm -hmm. Got to be a great lover at all times, even after working 18 hours. Got to be the greatest father sensitive to all the tykes, okay? You got to be well groomed. You have to come on. My <laughs> father, he he would have went back to Ireland. But, but listen, there is one thing I want to say. I've been reading now the low expectation marriages of the past, and none of us would want to go back to those. When the man expe the man expected to get his good sex outside of the marriage. Where? Though, Wait, this is oh, France. Through, through most no, through most of history, through most of history in the 19th uh, century. I'm all, I only came on the scene in the 50s, and okay. it wasn't that way in Levittown. Sure, but I mean, if you if you look back at the low expectation marriages of the past, men did not expect their wives to be to enjoy sex. Women did not expect their husbands very often to be faithful. Mm -hmm. People did not expect a lot of intimacy. Right. Now we have a split in this country between traditionalists, who the family unit is very sacrosanct, and then the new wave people, single mothers, gay marriage, commune people, I mean, are all over the place. You say everybody should just accept everybody else, right? Here's what I say, that marriage, we're not going to get this toothpaste back into the tube. Some marriages, and I think we can make more marriages actually, and I talk about the research about that, are really, really wonderful. Fairer than ever before in history, more satisfying, and I think we can get more of those. But the fact is that we're not going to be able to get everybody to get married and stay married. But why married. should we just let marriage, as it has in Europe, deteriorate to the point that it doesn't mean anything for society anymore? See, traditionally heterosexual marriage is given privileges in America, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. The uh, secularists want to break that down and say, ah, we don't care. Let me read you something that you wrote in the Los Angeles Times okay. that I <laughs> took exception to. Oh, all okay. right, here we go. <laughs> Divorced and unwed parents need constructive advice on effective parenting, along with job training and education to increase their economic security. The children need high-quality child care, which has been shown to help children overcome risks in their family and community settings. And who's going to pay for that, Ms. Coons? <laughs> I'm going to pay for that. So you, what you're setting up there is anything goes and O'Reilly's got to pay for it. Uh-uh. Now I'll tell you what, if we don't get good child care for the kids of impoverished parents, you're going to pay a lot more for it. Well, how about we it? don't okay? get kids born out of wedlock? How about that? Well, you go ahead and stop them. You know, I mean, how are we going to? Well, how about, how about I can't stop them, but I can certainly discourage it and put peer pressure on the other end. Well, good for you. I believe that you the should very do it too. And I, you listen. Anybody asks me, I say, 
Raising a kid by yourself is a really hard thing. I don't think you should get it's into this. It's not only a really hard thing. It's an imposition on your fellow Americans. It can be, but, you know, here's the thing. Uh, can here's be. You th want me to pay for all of this stuff? Now, wait a minute. You this want is... me to pay for effective okay. parenting advice, hey, job training, and child care. Bill, Bill, you Bill. want me to pay for it. Bill, come on. Now, let's you have, do. Let's have some fun here. What we're talking about it ain't fun is to me. the context of this is people saying that the best way to handle poverty in America is to get poor women who are moms married, whether to the fathers of their kids or to somebody else's kid. I'm saying, you know, maybe the best way is to, instead of spending all of our money on promoting marriage, to um, help people build healthy relationships. Because, but, you know... Well, don't you understand what I'm saying here? Of course if I do. If society would say the traditional family is the goal, and if yes. you go outside that, that's not good. Right. Make a judgment. Okay. Because it's not good because you have to intrude on me and every other hardworking traditional American to pay for your mistake <laughs> and your nuclear family or whatever you want to call it's it. It's outrageous. You know, I've had too much fun writing this book to get mad back. But let you me can just, get mad at me. No, if no, I'm I don't, wrong, I don't want to get mad. Right but here's, here's the problem. Sometimes when you get too absolutist, it backfires on you. And all this new research on teen, uh, the teens who take these virginity pledges is a great example. You get these kids, they take teen virginity pledges, only 12% of them keep it. And one of the things that's interesting is that in the context of our modern world, where in fact, as you were saying, you get this Paris Hilton stuff, you got all this sexualized thing, which I probably dislike as much as you do. These I don't kids, see, I don't, uh, these you're, kids, you're and let me, me, let me finish my sentence, let me finish, you're please. Misreading May I please finish ahead. my sentence? Go ahead. So, these kids who took the teen virginity pledges turn out to have less safe sex yeah, before they lose their virginity I don't care and about afterwards. I think, I think all that, if they want to take a pledge, fine. I don't care what they do. I don't care what they do. What I want society to do is to tell people you're on the road to destruction if you're a single parent. If you're not going to be responsible, don't expect O'Reilly or Miss Kuntz to pay your bills. Okay, That's but, not morally right. But let I'm me not ask put here on this earth so I can give somebody parenting instruction. Okay, then let's Society just drop, let's, should put let's drop that. Foot down. Let's, let's drop Last that. Word, but let's go, ahead. Let's go back word. to one thing. Um, I think that a couple of cooperative, good married parents is about the best deal you get. That's what On the nature other hand, says. You don't always get it. And right. it doesn't but have to be a disaster. We strive for it instead of encouraging the Armageddon. But, but if it's happened, we should help people raise their families right. responsibly. We have to help them. But okay. we should encourage them not to screw up. We don't have a so lot they have of disagreement. To intrude on us. It's just a question of right. dealing with reality. Provocative book, Ms. Coons. Thank you for coming in. We appreciate it.